So I don't know what the deal is with synth companies making like the softest t-shirts known to man, but they're really onto something. So I think over the course of the next year, my goal is going to be to replace like my entire t-shirt wardrobe with these random swag t-shirts from any company that will send me one because they're like the most comfortable thing on the face of the earth. On a completely unrelated note, I don't know about you guys, but I really don't like shopping in public. I don't like going to the grocery store. I don't even like using the self-checkout because it just makes me anxious. So that being the case, I typically just order everything from Amazon. So every day at my house is kind of like this weird version of Christmas for miscellaneous household items and random audio gear. The problem with my Amazon addiction is I also have the little app on my phone, so sometimes when I can't sleep I'm in bed and just scrolling through Amazon at 3 in the morning and get something and then I completely forget that I ordered it, and this is one of those times. So today I have a contact microphone. This is a cheap little random Chinese contact mic from Amazon. This is the Luve something or other. It'll be linked down in the description below. And I figured I would do a video on contact mics because I've intended to do one for a while. And originally I wanted to do a video about building your own contact microphone because it's really not that hard to do. However, with all the work I've been doing and just other stuff going on, I just haven't had time to do it. So I figured the next best thing is just ordering a random one off Amazon and then I can make a video about it. So before we get into everything today, what is a contact microphone and how does it work? So this is the contact microphone itself. It's just this little element in here and that's what picks up the sound, transmits it through this cable and you can plug it into whatever you want. So a contact microphone works kind of in the same way as a regular microphone, just a bit different. If you think about the way a regular microphone works, like this fancy Deity S Mic 2 I'm using for my videos, how baller does that sound? It picks up vibrations in the air. When something makes a sound, the pressure in the air changes. The microphone capsule picks that up, a bunch of sciencey stuff happens, and out comes sound. Now this little guy works kind of off the same principle, just in a different way. A contact microphone picks up vibrations of a physical body. So a really common and popular use of a contact microphone is something like an acoustic guitar or a cello or a violin that doesn't have an electric, you know, output jack or something and you want to record it or play it live or something like that, you need to amplify it. This is what you would go to for that. So a contact mic gets stuck onto something, that thing vibrates, this picks up the vibration and out comes sound. It's pretty cool stuff and actually can provide some really unique opportunities for sound design. Another really great thing about contact microphones is how isolated they are. Because they aren't depending on the sound around them, they're just picking up vibration. That means if I was recording, say, my acoustic guitar and I had a big loud drum kit right next to me, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't pick up the sound of that drum kit. It would just give me the recording of the guitar, which is pretty cool. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you can also use contact mics to get weird, which is what we're going to be doing today. You could stick this on your driveway and drive your car up it and record that sound. You could stick it on a glass and fill it with water and record that sound. You could stick this onto your desk and hit your desk with a drumstick and record that sound. It's actually pretty cool stuff. So today I figured I would just grab a bunch of random stuff, record it with the contact microphone, process it, and turn it into a song. So let's go grab some stuff and get started. Alright, so here we are in Bitwig, and I figured I would show you guys the final result and then walk you through some of the processing. Uh, warning, this is going to be loud because this is fully like mixed and mastered so far. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Again, volume warning, 3, 2, 1, here we go.
pretty neat stuff. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So let's go ahead and break down some of the sounds here. First off, let's talk drums. I really like this drum kit. So uh, first up here, I've got the camera lens case for the kick drum. And I just pitched this down. I added a pitch envelope to it. Uh, just chopped out a really short sample, tightened it up with the envelope here, low passed a bit. I've got the PSP MCQ, uh, just boosting up some of that low and making it in general sound more gooder. The PSP Noble Q EX, love this EQ for just about everything. It just adds so much warmth and punch. Uh, PSP Mix Saturator here, just to add a bit of grit to it. This is on the tape one mode and output saturation is engaged. So whenever it hits uh, the top level of the meter, it's just gonna add a bit more crunch. A little bit of drive here from a distortion, about two dB, just the tiniest, tiniest bit. And then a disperser on the end here at 40 Hertz. And that just really adds the low end. Uh, without that, you'll hear it, you know, it's a thumpy kick, but it doesn't really have that, you know, big knocking, huge low end energy. And the disperser really, really adds that. In terms of the percussion, uh, we'll go through that next. I've got the camera sound here. And didn't really do much other than high pass it, boost the highs, and I added a blur, uh, which just adds a bit of space because it's like a little Haas delay effect. This percussion is another camera sound. Uh, didn't do all that much there. High passed, added some high end, that's it. Uh, up here I've got one more percussive sound. This is kind of another high hat. Uh, high passed it, added some high end, and that's it. Uh, let's talk about this one. This is one of the candle sounds. I really like how they turned out. This is kind of like a darker rim shot. I didn't really do anything to this actually other than just send it to a reverb. That is the Oral River reverb here, three second decay time, and then I just EQ'd that to make a pretty narrow bandpass-ish sound. So that was it for the drums. Uh, let's talk about the snare, because this is my favorite sound, I think. So I think the snare turned out fantastic. This is the trail mix where I hit uh, the bottom of it, and it just made this really interesting crunch, and I really wanted to bring out that sense of kind of crunchy squishiness. So I didn't do all that much in the sampler. Pitched it up slightly, high pass to get rid of some low end thumpiness, tightened up the envelope, and then just worked with some EQ to bring out those characteristics that I really liked. Uh, from there, I compressed it really hard. Um, so I think, yeah, it looks like I'm taking about 5 dB, 2 to 1 ratio threshold. Um, just drove up the input till it, you know, felt right. Added distortion. This is about 9 dB of drive. Uh, ring mod here. And a frequency shifter. Without those, it sounds like this. So, you know, it was just a bit blah. The ring mod just adds some interesting kind of crunchiness to it. I'm not sure why that is. And then frequency shifter, just to pitch it up slightly to get it to where I wanted it to be. Slice EQ, uh, just kind of one final touch-up EQ to boost a couple things I liked and wanted to bring out. And then one more compressor just to squish it all back together, only taking off about 3 dB or so, and that was it. All of the drums then get fed into the mix saturator here. This is Valve 2, output saturation, added some low end with the warmth control. Um, not too much to talk about there. Noble Q EX again, uh, just really like this, mostly just boosting some low stuff, boosting some high stuff. And then one final slice EQ just as a whole to kind of balance things out and bring out some of that top end because a contact mic really doesn't have too much high end response in like the really, really upper range. So to bring out some of that, you had to kind of, you know, pull that up pretty hard. Uh, the other percussive elements here, this is some random Foley. I think this is all from the camera. Yep. Okay, so that stuff is just this. And this is mostly just to bring out stuff in the groove. There's not that much happening here. I'm um, just cleaning up and boosting some high end, compressing, and then boosting... Uh, just a couple things I wanted to accent, and then I think, yeah, just compression and similarly cutting out low end, adding high end. So that completed the drum groove. Cool. Let's talk about instruments now, because this is where things got real interesting. So first off, I have this here, which is the hats, or percussion, I guess. So this is one of the camera samples. I just chopped it into a little pattern. Uh, this is slice EQ to bandpass, 
M auto pan just to pan it around your head. A corrosion on sign mode. Uh, erosion in Ableton works. Otherwise, go by corrosion from Hornet. It's a great little plugin that's very cheap. Another corrosion on stereo noise. Slice EQ, again, just to cut out some stuff and boost some stuff. And then Convology XT, which is a free convolution reverb. And I'm using a sample of my cupboard. I don't know. Just, you know, random impulse response that made it sound good. Then uh, for the faster hi-hat pattern here, one of the camera sounds, a blur, another convology. This is a electric hi-hat. Quick delay uh, tool here, just bringing up the volume, and then slice EQ just to boost some high-end and clean up kind of a weird resonance that this sound had. The skull cup, this is the main kind of pad instrument. <laughs> So this is on cycles mode, which turns this into a wavetable. So this is basically just kind of like resynthesizing the sound. And that's pretty much all I did. I just kind of cheated to make some cool sounds because I didn't really get anything that had a nice clear tone. Uh, so this feeds into a reverb. Those are the settings. Uh, M vibrato just to add some kind of tape warble. Slice EQ uh, looks like that. Corrosion right here on saw mode just to add some kind of grit. Uh, bit 8, which is a bit crusher slash low fire thingy. A mix saturator. Again, this is tape 1, and I'm driving this real, real hard uh, using the low and high controls just to shape this. And then slice EQ on the very end to clean it up and just kind of make it fit in the mix. So the bass is actually the same skull cup sound here. Uh, this is cycles mode, so this is the wavetable again, and then just set up a looping point. Played with the formant to make it more bassish-y. This goes into a big old distortion, driving 36 dB, compressing uh, for about 5 dB. Slice EQ, boosting just low and then some kind of low mid to make it a bit more audible. Uh, that feeds into another big old distortion, 40 dB-ish. Ladder filter, just nice thick filter. A chorus and then a tool on the end just to drop the amplitude back down because this got real, real loud. But nice bass sound. Finally, this main melodic instrument. That is another sample of the candle here. This goes into Tal Dub 2. Great free little delay. Um, not really too much to talk about with that. Just, you know set it till it sounded good. This feeds into an amp on stereo, class AB, these are the settings. Uh, Oral River reverb again, uh, eight second reverb, so pretty long. Slice EQ, cleaning up, boosting high end. Bit eight, uh, just for a bit of lo-fi goodness. Corrosion on sign mode, amount of 8%, very, very, very subtle. A M vibrato, this is on the mess mode, smoothed out and slowed way down. This adds a really, really nice tape warble lo-fi effect. And that was it. Uh, like I said, the final reverb, I don't think anybody else is getting sent to that. The pad is. So the pad goes into that same reverb the snare gets fed into. Uh, this percussion loop does as well. And that's it. So yeah, that is how I made all these sounds with the contact microphone. The mastering, in case you're curious, PSP mix saturator, these are the settings. Uh, after that, vintage warmer 2, those are the settings for that. Just going for about 2 dB of gain reduction. Then that goes into Master Comp, again, about 2 dB of gain reduction, 2.38 to 1, uh, attack time about 50-ish milliseconds, release time to the track. Hornet Tape, uh, this is Swiss 15 IPS, or inches per second. Go get Hornet Tape if you do not have it. It's incredibly cheap and sounds amazing. Hornet Analog Stage after that, another very cheap, very great plug-in. Tube mode driven up just to make it nice and fat. Noble Q on the end, boosting some low, boosting some high, valve mode, and just tweaking that bias knob, I think is what this is supposed to be, um, just to give it a bit more crunch. And then finally, the master limiter is PSP Xenon. Um, oversampling should be on, uh, just going up by 1 dB, transient mode B, 52%. That's just what felt right. So yeah, um, that is everything made with just a contact microphone and some random stuff around my house. Uh, very, very cool stuff. So I think that does it for this video. Like I said, if you want to pick this up for yourself, you can find it linked down in the description below. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.